Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we have Andy Searle, who is the CEO of Business Process Enabling South Africa, or BPASA. Um, BPASA is an industry body association for business services in South Africa and is focused on the growth opportunity for South Africa on the world stage for traded services. Um, so welcome to the jam, Andy. Thanks, Nick. Cool. So to start us off, could you just give me a brief overview of the company and its core functions? Certainly. So BPES is a not-for-profit company. And uh, as you mentioned, we serve as an industry body and trade association for global business services in South Africa. And our focus is on servicing both the international and the domestic markets. Um, our purpose really is to market South Africa to um, the world. And that's particularly to the sourcing markets um, that have a strong um, requirement for English language skills. Um, and the types of core skills that we'll be talking about um, to address their services. And it's about um, showing the attraction and value proposition of South Africa as a place to offshore their business processes. And we do that um, to create, stimulate uh, local job creation, particularly for unemployed youth. Um, we also play a role of coordinating industry role players, um, both within the country and outside. So um, buyers of services and the um, service providers. And uh, we focus on providing a and facilitating a sustainable supply of skilled people to enable the sector to remain competitive and to grow. Right. And um, as part of your business, you're trying to um, mitigate off offshore outsourcing. And I was just wondering how has um, COVID-19 shaken up that um, part of your business location strategy and risk mitigation for offshore outsourcing? It's had a really big impact, Nick, um, across the world. So different countries responded differently to um, the lockdown regulations that they each had. In our particular case, um, South Africa, you know, with a strong collaborative relationship between our government and business stakeholders, um, designated the um, outsourcing sector as an essential service provider and consequently um, didn't have the disruption many countries did. So um, the delivery of essential and critical services continued throughout our lockdown um, without disruption. And that's proven to be very significant in demonstrating um, that amongst other destinations, there are some like South Africa that um, are very reliable and dependable in the time of a global crisis. So what's happened is in, in certain parts of the world, and I know it's also affected um, Australian and New Zealand business, um, they've offshored work to, to different territories and those countries have either had to shut down fully or they've experienced immense disruption to their services and that work's had to be placed elsewhere. Um, otherwise, you, you know, it's, it's just called major disruption and losses um, to their clients. So. What's happening now is um, the strategists and the, um, the procurement uh, um, execs, et cetera, and, uh, are, are looking very carefully at where they place that business, particularly if it's being offshore. And even if they have been traditionally doing that work onshore, they too may have experienced um, really um, big impact in terms of their own lockdowns. So we're seeing work move around the world at the moment, um, and quite quickly so. Um, as organizations adopt a new strategy, and it's twofold. They're looking at a geographic strategy. So where do I put my work in which country? And it's not all of it. There's a diversification or um, a, um, an unbundling of the, the kind of high levels of concentration that we've seen. So that's just a, a, a geographic dispersion of that work. Um, that's the first. And the second is the operating models are changing. So no longer is the work done all at the office. Um, and it's about organizations that can support um, different types of work, but from a hybrid model of working on premise and working from home and still delivering the same quality um, service that the client is accustomed to or the consumer is accustomed to. So big changes. And uh, in our case, they're very beneficial. As I mentioned, South Africa's uh, profile has been elevated through this and, and we're seeing the results of that um, as we speak. So I think this is a defining moment in the global business services sector in terms of um, location strategy, procurement strategies, and also just revisiting 
um, you know, what is really important from an operating model point of view, um, from a reliability, cost effectiveness, risk mitigation point of view. Right. Um, and continuing on with outsourcing, um, a lot of companies are turning to South Africa um, for outsourced f and and collections. Um, could you give us an insight as to why that is? Yeah, the, uh, it's, um, South Africa you know, really has a wealth of, of um, financial skills. We've got a very large domestic market. Um, what I should mention um, for your viewers and listeners is that um, the domestic uh, global business services market um, in South Africa, so that's all the captives doing work in South Africa, some of them with head offices here doing work in the rest of Africa and elsewhere, um, consists of more than 200,000 people. And a large portion of that is financial services related. Um, and our export services market is um, larger than 65,000 people. And a, a fair portion of that is financial services related. So um, global research showed in 2019 that, that finance leaders actually ranked South Africa in the top five preferred locations for offshore um, F&A work. Um, South Africa has been ranked um, seventh, uh, you know, as the um, or seven places ahead of the Philippines, and overall, um, South Africa as an offshore destination sits just behind India uh, in second place, which is really quite significant. The World Economic Forum um, places South Africa in the top 20 countries for the strength and innovation of the of our financial services sector, our compliance and regulations. Um, we have world class strengths in financial modeling and analytics. Um, we have you know, alongside that an empathy driven and outcome based um, collections, culture and capability. And our operating costs um, are significantly lower in this particular area than Australia, for example, up to 50% um, lower, which of course is a huge attraction. And as I said, the location itself offers a lot uh, for all the reasons we talked about earlier. And an interesting point to note is that South Africa has um, almost six times more actuaries than India does. So as small a country as we are, we've got um, depth of skills in certain key areas and uh, finance and accounting is just one of those strengths. Right. And um, also software development is um, another area where South Africa is um, a key player on the world stage. So um, could you also offer some insight as to why big brands are going to South Africa for that as well? Absolutely, Nick. And uh, you've got brands like Hollard, eBay, Vodafone, um, Avis, ARA, uh, Lloyds of London, Deloitte, um, and there are many others um, offshoring software development into South Africa. We've got very big brands in South Africa, you know, international brands like uh, Tech Mahindra, Tata, um, and, and many others uh, doing their work from South Africa and in, in South Africa. Um, there, there are a number of reasons for that, uh, Nick, and, and I'll try and touch on the, the key points. So firstly, we've got a, a, a really good talent pool um, of skilled computer scientists, software engineers, um, analysts, and they're culturally aligned with Australia, um, you know, speaking uh, native language, native English um, as, a, as a language. Um, in terms of the throughput in our skills supply chain, we have more than 86,000 new STEM graduates coming into the system per year. And um, we offer a very, from a service delivery point of view and offering point of view, the South African companies offer very flexible, agile engagement models, which is also very attractive um, in, the, in today's times of needing to be very responsive. Um, and it ranges from co-sourcing um, and team augmenting, augmentation to traditional outsourcing. So um, very adaptable to what the particular business's requirements are. Again, operating costs are, are lower. I mean, a software, junior software developer, for example, in South Africa would cost the equivalent of, of 18,000 Australian dollars per year. Um, and a solution architect um, cost would be about 95,000 Australian dollars per year. So when you have a look at um, the cost of the same skill um, and, and a strong kind of uh, alignment in terms of the way in which those skills are, are deployed, um, there really is a big attraction. Um, we've also importantly got very strong data protection laws and various other um, standards that we comply with. Um, and they come from not just internally, the requirements of, of our own uh, banking sectors um, and, and various others that have driven this. 
Um, but South Africa also um, servicing many offshore markets must be compliant to other regulations like GDPR. Um, we, we are compliant with many of the ISO standards. We've in fact been uh, key in, and very instrumental in formulating the um, ISO standards for um, GBS. So um, I, I also want to mention that I think you know COVID has has just accelerated um, the, the not just the rethink of offshoring where organisations you know in the past would have been you know very reluctant to to outsource bits of work or chunk you know full pieces of work they'd rather have done it in house but they are really looking at doing that and that's to um, access the skills um, you know to look for that reliability in the, in their delivery. Um, and also, you know, we, we see everybody across the world under such pressure to digitize and automate. And with talent shortages in the RTC, RT space, where do you go? And we do have capacity to meet the challenges. And that's something that's not very well understood about South Africa. So um, that combined with what's well known uh, for, for, for the client base and the case studies talked to, you know, of outsourced software work to South Africa, um, it, it's got that, that, that feature of being able to supply the talents is, is combined with really good quality delivery, um, the accuracy and reliability of meeting customer requirements and development requirements on time. Um, and these are key attributes. So um, you've got the big brands doing that and there's a good reason why and uh, very much something, you know, we would love um, the broader um, Australian and New Zealand markets to be aware of. Okay, yeah. And um, just quickly at the end, uh, you, uh, BPESA has got four webinars coming up in Australia this month. Um, could you give me a quick overview on that and how viewers can register? Absolutely. We're very excited to be working with uh, um, David Bass and uh, with Sharon Melamed from um, Matchboard and from Bass PR. Um, and we've got four um, great initiatives that they've arranged for us. So the first one, um, is on October the 15th, and it talks about how um, Australians' biggest brands are, um, are uh, really exceeding with customer acquisition and excelling with customer acquisition and support. What are they doing? And we'll talk to you how some of them have offshored uh, that work to South Africa and are partnering with us about that. So it's all about uh, customer service excellence. Um, the second one takes place on October the 22nd. And uh, that really talks about why um, companies are turning to South Africa for outsourced f and as we were talking about, and collections. Um, and again, with some really great uh, case studies uh, to, to address, um, including one from MasterCard. Um, the third series takes place on uh, October the 29th. And uh, that looks at why big brands are um, placing and, and moving uh, um, work to South Africa for software development specifically. And the final series, which takes place on the 5th of November, talks about um, the impact of COVID um, and how to shaken up location strategies and the need for risk mitigation for um, offshore outsourcing. Now to register for any of these events, and you can go to uh, Matchboard's website, which is www.matchboard.au and go to the event section. And uh, there's an online registration capability. It will also give you much more information about these four um, events as part of a mini series. So we really look forward to the opportunity of engaging um, with the execs in the um, Australian and New Zealand space to share more about you know, the, the tremendous value that South Africa has to offer them and their businesses and the partnership way in which this is done. And uh, we hope that it's fruitful and, uh, and in time and perhaps when we speak again, we'll be talking about many more case studies um, with, with great results to share. Awesome, hope so. Well, um, that concludes today's 10 minute IT Jam with Business Process Enabling South Africa or BPESA uh, CEO, Andy Searle. Um, thank you so much for coming on today, Andy. Thank you very much, Nick.